What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to discuss about the flight controller updates, the testing, and what are the design changes I've gone through and the progress. Let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Karthik Rangarajan, founder and CEO of Agam Robotics. Hope you guys are doing well. Come for the drones and stay for the product updates. Just to brief again, the flight controller or autopilot stack has like four different components, the carrier board, flight controller, IMU board, and the flex PCB connecting flight controller and IMU board. There were three components that had issues with the flight controller board. Flash memory chip, the crystal oscillator, and IMU. Flash chip was the one which consumed a lot of time to fix, but that was also the one which solved most of our problems. The one we used, like we knew it was an alternate component, but the required part was not available. So I thought like, let's go with the available one. And if that doesn't work, we can get the required part in the meantime and then swap. Easy, right? Nope. That was the biggest problem. The component, which is the flash memory, was a BGA package. BGA is like ball grid array. The solder balls are at the bottom of the component, so it is not something you can actually solder with a soldering iron. You need a hot air rework station. This is something we have seen in our previous video. But the problem was the placement and not the soldering itself. It had to be so perfect that a slight tilt or any rotation would not have a proper solder join. This means that it would not allow us to connect and upload the firmware. I have damaged three boards already by multiple reworks. I had just one board for a last attempt. I was very careful and took like four hours to solder and get it right. Finally, I got it working, but there's a catch. We'll see that later. The next is the crystal oscillator. I admit I had the wrong one in there. Again, because of chip shortages, I chose a different one which was within the spec, but somehow that did not work out. But hey, I tweeted about this issue and one of my Twitter or X followers, Kushagra, suggested that I try Worth Electronics. I did have few Worth Electronics parts in my bill of materials. They all came from outside India. I never knew we had a local warehouse. I contacted them and they said they do have some samples and they sent it immediately and I tested it, I got it working. That was a huge sigh of relief. And that's how my friends, you tweet about your problem and there will always be someone out there who would have gone through that same problem and might be able to solve it for you. Once again, thanks to Kushagra and Worth Electronics for that. The next part is the IMU. I guess we had discussed this while back in one of my previous videos about the flight controller. The IMU was supposed to be swapped from the flight controller to the IMU board. It was fairly doable, not a complicated part in there. So the next in the stack is the carrier board. The board has been tested and it's all working fine, but there is a major design change. It's about removing the microcontroller on the carrier board. It does the IO processing of the modules connected between the carrier board and the flight controller, and that is being eliminated now and all that process happens on the flight controller. So we have reduced the components and thereby reducing the cost of the carrier board. I have sent the files for manufacturing. We are fixing few manufacturing issues and those should be resolved soon. The next board in the stack is the IMU board. You might have seen the whole rework video. You can check that out here if you haven't. I have tested all the components on the IMU board to see it is working, everything looked good. So I got a new PCB done after the necessary design change like updated all the traces, fixed minor issues, and I opted to do manual soldering by swapping the components from the old board to this new board. Easy, right? Nope, that's where the biggest problem is. I got all the components done except BMM150, which is again, a tiny BGA component, which is one tenth the size of the flash chip. So you can imagine all the struggle going through to doing the soldering and especially trying to do the reballing. Whenever I tried to do reballing, the component would just fly away or it would just like blow the solder ball itself. Even at the minimum air blow level, it just wouldn't work. I just could not do it after so many failed attempts and then I gave up. It just took too much time and it was not worth doing this. I was looking for the component availability everywhere, but unfortunately it isn't available. And then I finally found it on RS Delivers. They had few in stock and immediately contacted them and told them to ship it. And I should say, before they called uh, three days later, saying that they are going to dispatch, I had already received the components. I soldered the component and took like five minutes, which actually took like weeks for doing the reballing. And I tested, everything is working fine. The whole board is working. So the IMU board now is completely sorted out, though 
I need to add that I had to do some extensive testing on the drone itself, like doing field tests to check durability. That's still pending. Another thing I need to add here is that there might be a new change as well, like a version 2 maybe, to sort of like replace this BMM150, which is a PGA package. It's hard to rework. And also as suggested by Malikarjan here, he says that he really had bad experiences doing the rework on this BMM150. So this could happen in the later stage, maybe not now. The fourth part in the stack is the IMU flex cable, which connects the flight controller and the IMU board. Not a complicated stuff, a slight design change though, I have increased the length of the cable itself for better flexibility. So that's it on the electronic side. I want to discuss the enclosure or the casing part, which is covering the entire electronic board. So for the flight controller, I'm planning to do a CNC machine, the aluminum piece, so that the board, when it gets super hot, the heat gets dissipated through the aluminum with the heat sink paste. The carrier board will be mostly 3D printed or I'm also planning for a vacuum casting. Initially, that would be the case and probably will move on to injection molding once everything has been settled down. Subscribe if you haven't to the channel and stay tuned for that. Before we start testing, I wanted to mention one thing here. If everything is ready, what is stopping us from flying the drone using the flight controller what we have done? You remember when I said there's a catch with the flash chip? Because it is manually soldered, it does get detected and I was able to load the firmware, but somewhere there is a loose connection in the solder joint, which is causing a disconnect randomly. Also, it takes a huge amount of time to like load the parameters. And sometimes it, when I make like changes to 10 parameters, it only saves five of those. So because of this unreliable component, which is being soldered, I don't want to take a risk and put it onto a drone and test it. So, for now, I've like already sent for manufacturing with the right components, which are all like machine placed. So we should be able to like test the actual board once we get it. It could take probably three to four weeks now. So stay tuned again for that. We'll, once we get the board, we'll start doing the testing on the drone and we'll do like more flight tests. But now let's see what the board does on the bench testing. All right, we have the drone right here and I have connected the flight controller and the IMU board. I just wanted to show you guys like what's inside. You can see it's our uh, flight controller, IMU board and the flex cable. And it's closed, like it's not completely enclosed right now. And I also connected uh, all the other components we had tested in the previous drone, if you remember. If you guys haven't watched it, you can like check that out here. And we have like the crossfire, we also have like our uh, optical flow sensor. Um, it's double taped, I think it's stuck. As you can see, it's the Agam flow uh, optical flow sensor. And we have all the other things connected on the telemetry on the SPI. So it's time to connect to the Q ground control. I like power it on. You should see all the lights flickering, it's all green here. We also got the green light from the flight controller. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see on the Q ground control, it's showing up some of the uh, errors what it has been detecting. And uh, maybe it's because uh, in some case, like I actually moved um, the drone to show the uh, green light. So that's something it's uh, something you can ignore as of now. Um, but what you can actually see is that on the Q ground control, you can see the green bar and uh, that's midway. That's where the problem is. It connects, it's detecting. So as you can see, it says like I can disconnect. So right now it's connected, but it's not loading all the parameters of the flight controller. That's where the problem is. It takes at least like 15 to 20 minutes of time. So I'll just like let it stay as is connected. And then we can like uh, look into it once it's back online.
Right, as you can see now, um, the IMU sensors are being read. I can do the, all the uh, roll pitch in the R. And you can see all the uh, directions, north, east, south. There's some magnetic interference on this location. But it should be able to get it working outdoors. It shouldn't have any problem in detecting, uh, you know, there shouldn't be any uh, too much of interferences. I also will be having a GPS which can actually combine those data. But as you can see now, the IMU board is working perfectly fine, right? The problem here is like it keeps connecting and disconnecting, reads the data and some of the parameters are not loaded and so on. That's where the problem I'm facing. As of now, like uh, I'm trying to configure some of the parameters for the motors, uh, like the ESCs and some of the sensors, right? So when I make changes, it only saves uh, some of the parameters. And like by the time I try to save other uh, parameters, it gets disconnected. And so it wouldn't have saved uh, some of the parameters. Uh, I guess like that's probably because the uh, way the flash memory is soldered, the flash chip, so that's something that needs to be fixed and that can be only done through like you know machine soldering these uh, VGA components. So that's something I'm waiting for and probably once we get the board we can actually do a real test putting it on the drone and like fly it. As of now I'm not able to get this working because of that parameter, saving the parameter issue. And probably by the time if we get the boards, before we get the boards, if I try to fix that on this setup, I'll try to do a flight test and we can like look into it. All right, I guess that's it for now. And uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more updates. Thank you. See you in the next video.